You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, YNR fans, Belinda from Soap Dirt here, and we've got a comings and goings updates. And in particular, I want to talk about Sharon Newman's scant appearances and how things are changing that could see her permanently sidelined. We're also going to talk about who else is in and who is out at the CBS Soap Opera. But first, please click subscribe if you have not. So real quick, before we talk about Sharon and also Nick and Sally, I want to talk about a few other casting tidbits. First, we do have a little while longer with Christopher Cousins as Dr. Alan Laurent. Initially, he was set to film just 10 episodes in April to air in May. But then Cousins said CBS extended his run and he shot through May. No word if he is wrapped yet or is still shooting, but he at least shot through May. And that means Ashley Abbott's DID story will last well into June. And we're about to hit the high notes in this storyline this week when Ashley, Tracy Abbott, and the good doctor are in Paris investigating. And they're going to find out the good doctor has what sounds like a bad brother who might be the source of Ashley's trauma that caused her split personalities. And we've also heard and seen Raylan Castor is back as Faith Newman soon in a behind the scenes photo with her and her TV parent. She was spotted on set with Sharon Newman and Nick Newman actors Sharon Case and Joshua Mora and her sister Mariah Copeland, who is played by Cameron Grimes. No word on why Raylan Castor is back as Faith, but you know, most soaps usually do young adult stuff in the summer when soap veterans take their annual vacations. So we last saw Faith. Faith Newman when she headed back to school after Cameron Kirsten killed her cat, kidnapped her, and her mom, Sharon, killed the guy. Understandably, Faith wanted to get back to school and far away from the drama in Genoa City, but now Faith is coming back, and I just wonder if there's going to be anybody her age to be a love interest by then. We do expect that we're going to see Jess Walton mostly in video call appearances for the foreseeable future as Jill Abbott. She seems to enjoy working remotely from her ranch, far from Hollywood. It's down in Oregon, up in Oregon, I guess, from where they are. And I do wonder if Jess Walton isn't thinking about retiring. And this is all part of her step back, this having this Jill sick storyline. And the Chancellor Winner's chat reminds me of somebody else that we see rarely these days. Connor Floyd as Chance Chancellor. Has he been sidelined also or just dropped to recurring? I mean, he doesn't have much of a storyline. He's a low level executive at Chancellor Winner's in some of the most boring storylines that YNR has scripted in recent memory. His romance with Summer seems sweet, but doesn't have a lot of drama, doesn't have a lot of teeth. It's kind of dull. And with Connor rarely seen, I have to wonder if he's headed out the door. Maybe. We'll let you know when we hear something. He's not been spotted in the credits for a while either, so that is a definite red flag. Something is up. However, if you probably know this by now, CBS Daytime rarely announces exits. They tend to just quietly sideline people and they think, you know, maybe fans won't notice. I don't know why they think soap fans don't notice things when they notice everything. Uh, you know, maybe they're going to treat Chance like they do Tessa and we'll see him a couple of times a month if that on the plus side, it looks like Colleen Zank has finally wrapped her run as Jordan Howard. Hopefully, that's the last we hear of her, at least for a couple of years. And I, I hope we're not subjected to a trial or any of that nonsense. So now let's talk about what I really wanted to talk about, Sharon Case. She had, I think when I looked, three episodes in May maybe two in April, I think two in March, maybe three in February. She's still in the opening credits and all that jazz, but based 
on these rare appearances, it has me wondering what they're planning for Sharon and if her character has been permanently sidelined, is she downgraded to recurring status and they just haven't told us? I mean, her company that was such a big deal she inherited from Cameron, we heard so much about that's evaporated. She's basically a part-time coffee shop barista therapist now. She's got no boyfriend. Her kids are grown. Her job is never seen on screen. And she only gets dialogue when somebody stops by to update her on their drama or she is asked for some kind of psychological diagnosis, referral, opinion, you know. It is promising that Raylene Castor is back as Faith because maybe Sharon will get some screen time with her daughter as part of whatever storylines they're planning for this summer. So we've also been teased for quite a while about a possible Schick reunion. People really like Sharon and Nick. They were together for a long time on and off for decades. And they pulled Nick away from Sally and Sharon away from Chance. And that had fans ready to see Nick back with Sharon. But then we got nothing. They have had Nick just having these little one-off conversations with Sharon and then kind of more interesting and heated conversations with Phyllis. And now out of nowhere, Nick is kind of having a flirty sort of sweet scene this week with Sally Spectra. And also this week, there's a scene where Adam and Chelsea have sort of a moment is how it's described in spoilers. So is Y&R trying to stop the ratings decline by trying new couple pairings or old couple pairings? And if so, why not give Sharon and Nick a try? You know, maybe maybe Y&R is going to do it. But it kind of feels like he's being drawn back to Sally, which is crazy because Adam and Sally have a huge following. But realistically, they could pair Nick with Sally, with Chelsea, with Phyllis, with Sharon, any of those fans will be happy. I mean, Josh Morrow could have chemistry with a broom. You know, <laughs> he's a good actor. He's a good looking guy. Chemistry's not the problem. Um, I didn't really like him with Sage. But aside from that, you know, I've enjoyed him with a lot of different women. And having Nick without romance in his life on Young and the Restless makes no sense to me. And with Sharon Newman sitting around with no love in her life, it seems like a wasted opportunity. Just try it. See what happens. It doesn't seem like Joshua Morrow is going anywhere. As a matter of fact, he's got a standalone episode coming up to celebrate his 30th anniversary at the CBS soap opera. But what I'm most concerned about is Sharon K. Case. And if she's going to stay sideline and we continue to see Sharon Newman only rarely, has CBS quietly moved her to recurring and they thought nobody would notice? Maybe. I mean, that's kind of the way they insult fans over there. So that's it. That's our YNR comings and goings update for this week. Keep an eye out for those rarely seen Sharon appearances and for the wrap up of Ashley's story and Alan's exit when it comes soon. Drop your comments on what you think. Have you noticed how rarely Sharon Case has been on? Are you worried they have moved her to recurring? Please click subscribe if you haven't. We really appreciate you supporting the channel and definitely come back soon. We're here talking Young and the Restless seven days a week. And as always, I'm your host, Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 